Longtime listeners, you know the drill. This episode is part of a much longer series. To be sure you get the whole story, we recommend that you jump back and start from episode one. Also, we want to invite any of our thousands of listeners who still use Facebook to join our friendly show group, which currently only has a couple of hundred fun-loving members. Just search for the show's name. As a rule, now's the moment when we would thank our beloved Patreon patrons and involve one, by real or fake name, in a conspiracy we just made up. This time, though, we're going to do a public service announcement for exactly one listener. Those in the Facebook group may have seen me post about this, but I received a voicemail through my webpage host. By the way, apparently, I can receive voicemails on my webpage, which is news to me. Anyway, a listener mentioned that he had found the show through Spotify, but couldn't figure out how to listen to any episode but the current one. Your host, not a Spotify user, crowdsourced answers to this gentleman's question, which I would have provided to him, but he didn't leave an email address. So I figure this is my best bet at passing on the ideas the Straniacs of the Facebook group came up with. First suggestion. Apparently, by tapping on the name of the show while you're listening to an episode, you should be able to bring up the show's complete feed. If this still doesn't work, another listener suggested a makeuseof.com article titled How to Find, Follow, and Download Podcasts on Spotify. I'll link to it, as well as a complete playlist of our QAnon series, which another listener created. We hope all of that helps. If not, please feel free to email us at theparanoidstrain at gmail.com, or if you use Facebook, stop by and join the group. They're a really helpful bunch. If you'd like your name or your pseudonym to join the Roll of Honor at the top of a future show, just sign up at patreon.com forward slash theparanoidstrain at the $5 tier. We thank you kindly, both for listening and for supporting. Finally, whether you do social media or not, please do drop us a line. Tell us what you think of the show. We're open to suggestions, criticisms, and recipes. Send them all to theparanoidstrain, that's all one word, at gmail.com. Okay. Let's get going. Paranoid Strain Orchestra, hit it. Speaking of cynical, dollar-minded manipulation, have any of you come across well-produced ads with very believable human voiceover alerting you to the greatest investment opportunity of our times? Trump 2020 Keep America Great Coins may vanish forever if certain people get their way and Nancy Pelosi is leading the charge with a proposed ban on innocent little items such as the President Trump 2020 coin. Republican lawmakers also took to Twitter and VMSMN disgusted this latest ploy by the Democrats. One was quoted as saying this stunning piece of history could soon become history. This is truly a sad day for our democracy. If you want to learn more or are interested in trying to reserve some of the few coins left Left, visit the website in the http colon slash slash survival skills dot online. This item sells for $39.95 on Amazon. Today's special promotion is offering a massive discount on this item. President Trump 2020 coin gold and silver plated claim one free OR claim a discount plus free shipping. This coin is a symbol of President Trump's victory and success. Highlights sun highest quality craftsmanship. Worthy of any collection, sun excellent gift items, any real patriot would love this coin. These are sizable coins, made to impress. Sun quality, proof like quality maintained inside a complimentary plastic case. Trump coin. It's like money, but with Trump on it. Yes, surely this is a currency that will stand long after the mountains have crumbled into dust. Look upon these fat stacks, ye mighty, and despair. Or, as a wonderful piece published last year in the New York Times would argue, maybe it's not that. Quote, Seen in full, the coin illustrates what watchdogs have long understood. Many untruths that Americans encounter online aren't created by foreign actors trying to sow division. They simply exist to help someone, somewhere, make a quick buck. The piece goes on to note the phenomenon of prominent Americans posting on social media, repping the coin. How prominent? 
How about Mr. Denzel Washington? The article quotes the actor in National Treasure as noting he couldn't stand the Democratic lies anymore. So he joined up with Team Trump. Unfortunately, due to the aforementioned evil lying Democrats, the equalizer feared that real money was soon to disappear. Luckily, the Trump coin would be a secure form of currency for the real patriots to use after this inevitable collapse. Jesuit, tell the nice people that Malcolm X did not say any such thing, please. Yeah, in spite of how realistic the preceding sounded, Mr. Washington did not, in fact, post any of the above, though these sentiments appeared on social media under his name and headshot. Similar fake endorsements appeared from Keanu Reeves, Mel Gibson, more believable, and hilariously, John F. Kennedy Jr. Who is, of course, dead. Not according to QAnon. And of course, the grift kept on getting griftier, as some of those who were boosting, or being taken in by, the idea of purchasing cheap Trump coins as a store of long-term value also came to believe that these coins would eventually convert into some fabulously remunerative official Trump cryptocurrency. The Times quoted a purchaser known as The Blue Ox, who reported investing 500 bucks on the back of this sort of solid investment thesis. You might reasonably wonder what people get if they send in their nominal fee. The Times brought sample coins to professional dealers who confirmed that said coins contained no precious metals. No! Yeah, the gold and silver on the surface was apparently paint. Say it isn't so. And as the coins were magnetic, the expert noted they were probably made of iron. But in these cases, the online deal is the driver, not the magnetic painted reality. And that internet fantasy of untold wealth that's protected against the currency-destroying demoncrats is largely fueled by affiliate marketing, anonymous online purveyors who simply hype whatever is popular for a small cut of the profits. As the story explains, whenever Trump's in the news, these affiliates start pumping up the coins, leveraging the obviously false story that somehow hated figures like Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden are even now plotting to ban these high-quality fake coins, which of course would only make them soar in future value. In other words, while true believers may be the buyers of these bullshit coins and of the whole bullshit QAnon worldview, the purveyors often have no ideology beyond the firmly held belief that the funds of QAnon rubes should be funneled into the bank accounts as efficiently as possible. Meanwhile, for those true believers, the ideological and financial go hand in hand. Our Aussie author, Van Batum, connects the dots between the psychological and monetary investments that Q adherents and spokespeople have made in the movement and the incredible mental effort that they then leveraged in pursuit of continuing their beliefs in the face of reality. It was because by late 2020, there was an industry of influencers and advocates ensconced that nurtured the faith of the community as a matter of income. They wrote books and made broadcasts, sold merchandise, asked for donations. O'Sullivan had attended a conference run by QAnon influencers before the election. Their message to the audience, he wrote, be patient and trust Q. Everything will come true after Trump's re-election. Now that Trump had lost, there was no small amount of desperation to maintain the myth in which so many had invested with their finances, with their income streams, with their character and their public reputations. No surprise, it all comes down to cognitive dissonance. Which should lead us to a quick consideration of the role that January 6th casualty Ashley Babbitt had in the evolution of the Q-slash-stop-the-steal movement's mythology. You'll recall that she was shot trying to breach a door in the Capitol by an armed officer. Van Batum recalls the way that the true believers characterized Babbitt at the time. Representative Mo Brooks doubled down on Twitter the next day, writing, Evidence, much public, surfacing that many Capitol assaulters were fascist Antifas, not Trump supporters. He added, Don't be fooled by hashtag fake news media, whose political judgment drives their reporting. Brooks' tweets also went viral. This was the mainstream context established in which QAnon supporters could argue over the next few weeks that hapless, dead Ashley Babbitt was never one of their own. Their community's active shares and repeats of the fake Antifa story empowered mainstream Trumpists with a populist momentum to make their false statements with confidence. So too did the imprimatur of that establishment allow QAnon adherents who weren't at the Capitol to convince themselves their movement remained nonviolent and pure. This is, of course, an example of the classic No True Scotsman fallacy, where any time a member of a group you identify with does something you don't like, you simply declare that no true member of the group would do that. So therefore, the person was never a part of that group, QED. 
Babbitt was shot by law enforcement, therefore she couldn't be a real patriot. She must be one of them Antifas. Then, in the intervening years, the narrative changed once more. Now, Ashley Babbitt was no longer an obvious Antifa plant. Now she's a martyred saint, killed by an out-of-control deep state law enforcement apparatus, even as she tried with her fellow patriots to wrest back democracy from those who would destroy it forever. And nobody who has jumped from one of these views to the other has even blinked an eye at the wrenching cognitive dissonance. It would be amazing if it wasn't so depressing. And so we turn to the final, and perhaps the most bizarre, of all of the twists and turns this story has taken. We have seen how QAnon is a movement that can live without Trump in office, as it morphs into the Stop the Steal conspiracy. And we have seen that it can exist in a nearly Trump-free state, as in Australia, the UK, and Germany. But what if, for some believers, the meaning of QAnon becomes not merely an all-encompassing worldview, but literally a religion? What the fuck kind of religion would QAnon be? Well, obviously, given that this is America, it would be one where, in a sense, Donald Trump merges with the pro-capitalist, fuck-the-poor version of American Jesus that our most fundamentalist evangelicals embrace. Are you saying that for some believers, Donald Trump is the second coming of the Messiah? I am exactly saying that. I'm going to have to build this case cumulatively, so let's start with a recent NPR interview with prominent evangelical Russell Moore, which centered on a story he had heard from a number of pastors at churches whose congregations had gone all in on Donald Trump and the MAGA way of life. Well, it was the result of having uh, multiple pastors tell me essentially the same story about quoting the Sermon on the Mount parenthetically uh, in their preaching, turn the other cheek. Uh, to have someone come up after and say, where did you get those liberal talking points? And what was alarming to me is that in, in most of these scenarios, when the pastor would say, I'm literally quoting Jesus Christ, uh, the response would not be, I apologize. The response would be, yes, but that doesn't work anymore. That's weak. And it, it, when, when we get to the point where the, the teachings of Jesus himself are seen as subversive to us, then we're in a crisis. In other words, Trumpism had convinced many modern evangelicals that gentle Jesus, meek and mild, is a pussy. Yes. And while the irony warms my cynical little heart, I think that story gets at the origin of the more bizarre scenario that's growing in the most dedicated subsets of evangelical Trumpism. The part that's turning into a straight-up religion that replaces the traditional centrality of Christ with Trump's completely fabricated tough guy persona. This all started with a number of self-styled prophets who began declaring with utter self-assurance that God had told them all about his plans to ensure that Donald Trump would be the savior of the American way of life. There was, they assured their acolytes, no chance at all that Trump would lose the 2020 election, even if the demon rats tried to use their 2,000 mules to stuff the ballots. God was going to ensure that America kept his chosen one at the wheel of the ship of state to 2024 and beyond, if necessary. It can be hard to separate the true believers from the grifters here, as it is in any scenario where delusions are the soup of the day. But I would pick this very mild-mannered young guy named Chris Yoon as my anchor for the true believer end of the tug of war if push came to shove. Mr. Yoon gained prominence in the lead-up to the 2020 election with his bold prophecies that God had assured him Trump would be inaugurated once again in January of 2021 and that fans of Trump and the Lord had nothing to fear whatsoever. Just so you understand exactly how certain of this he was, here are some clips starting on Election Day of 2020 and going up to January 19th of 2021, i.e. the day before Biden was inaugurated. What I want to declare right now is that the Lord is going to actually re-elect President Trump and he's going to allow him to come to office again for another four years. And so right now it's Thursday, uh, midday, and we don't know the election results and there's a lot of things hanging on a a thread and it's not certain. But what the Lord has revealed to me is that, and he also allowed me to vote for him, and what he's uh, allowed me to see into is this outcome of the U.S. election, that he will come and he will be elected again, but he's going to allow this period where people are, whether you're Christian or whether you're uh, not, or whether you're in support or not of him, to see that God takes all the glory. And I tell people, uh, if uh, God didn't want Trump in office, you know, he could have just snapped his fingers like Ruth um, Ginsburg, and he could have allowed somebody else to be in office, but he didn't. He knew from the beginning of his life, of our life, who's going to be president at 2016, all the way to 2024, and that right now is going to be President Trump. And people are going to regret, and they're going to reject who God has anointed. God has anointed, and he's appointed uh, Trump, and you have all all these people like myself and all their prophetic voices that are declaring that um, he is the chosen person for this time and place uh, once things turn around. And so once January 20th comes around, obviously we will have a sitting president. And at that time, 
everyone will be humbled in some way. Everybody will be humbled because they took a side or they had such a, a strong opinion only to have had such a reversal with that. You know that I've been giving a lot of prophetic word on what is to come to pass. And uh, it is a few days away from January 6th, as well as the 20th, where Trump will be uh, reelected. And I just want to share with you guys a couple of things the Lord's been putting on my heart. And the Lord's been giving me this word. He says, it's time. It's time for the walls of Jericho to come down. It's time. What I've done in the last few weeks is really uh, tried my best to set you up for what is to come and what is happening. And so um, a lot of the prophetic words I've said have come to pass or is um, going to come to pass. I've said this in multiple videos, but I do know that in this hour, which is this week, as well as in the subsequent weeks, there are three prophetic words that are remaining. And that are that is that Trump will be um, president again, uh, there's going to be some sort of military intervention and that there's going to be a swift move of justice. And whether that's over the span of a day or days or weeks, I don't know. And so I want to make clear that those are the three things that he's given me. Um, I do want to state that tomorrow is a big day and other prophetic voices have said other things would extend beyond that. And I can see that happening, but I think a lot of things would happen um, starting tomorrow. And I've also said that uh, the next 30 days would look like this. Those things have come to pass and it's still coming to pass. I've said that there's going to be chaos in the next two weeks. I said that back on the Friday uh, about a, a week and a half ago. And that extends, if you can count the two weeks, it extends beyond the 20th up till this Friday. And so and so even though you uh, are skeptical now and you hate me now or whatever it is, again, like I've said, just wait till tomorrow and then different things uh, will come to pass. Like a lot, there's a big domino effect. And so again, like I've said, hold your, hold throw on your stones because a lot of you guys have been coming at me with different things. And I tell people, if you are in the spirit and you receive it in the spirit, and even if you can engage me in that, then you would know that this is coming from the Lord. And many of you um, have that. Other so of course, when none of that shit happened, he backtracked and apologized, right? Would I be featuring him here if he had? Uh, yesterday, I, I have to really distinguish what the Lord is saying as prophetic word versus what is my opinion. And sometimes I'll confuse things. I'll say, you know, I think Biden would be um, arrested by the 19th. And I've said those things. Like, I think this, and I have to be more distinct because people are literally calling me out for those things. And for that, again, I apologize. But again, that's different than what the Lord has shown me as prophetic word. And I still believe that to then get all the glory. And so first of all, uh, the day's not over. You're reacting to midday. And then second of all, um, if the dates uh, or if uh, the dates or anything like that are off, there's other prophetic voices right now that have uh, supplemented what I'm saying. And so though, um, you know, some things may happen after this, um, you know, there's other prophetic things that have to be uh, fulfilled. And I don't want to get into the details of that. Other people are saying there's going to be two presidents. Uh, whenever, you know, we meet uh, God face to face, he will tell you Chris was right. And uh, the people that were against him were wrong. Or there were certain things that we didn't see in the physical and the natural that you had taken as being truth, but it wasn't. And so one he's given me that I still stick to is that Trump will be reelected and he will have a second term in this year, this season of the next four years, not 2024, this year. What was significant about yesterday, it seemed like it was not what I thought it would be as well as many other people. And the word he gave me to encourage me was, yesterday was significant, I gave that to you, but the day yesterday was, what he gave me was, it was the day that he allowed the shackles of this nation to be broken. And I've said this as an apology before, when it says, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And so this is referring to the Old Testament prophet who, um, needed to be uh, accurate in their prophetic word. And so in the Old Testament, you judge the prophet, but in the New Testament, you judge the prophecy. But really, a false prophet is not one that you that that is wrong in their prophecy. It's it's um, a false prophet is not is one basically that doesn't speak the heart of God. And I want to speak the heart of God. And so um, I thought that some of the earthly timelines, specifically January 20th, was part of the prophetic and the prophetic word still stands. And I believe that the Lord um, has firmly told me that Trump would be reelected in this term. Uh, it just hasn't come to pass yet. Uh, put yourself in my shoes, really trying to get this right, because again, I don't want to get it wrong in the sense that I'm deceiving hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and honestly, I've been just kind of, um, I don't want to say in doubt, but just really questioning a lot of different things and the reasons for why the Lord's been working. But, um, I still hold to all the, the promises that the Lord has given me, the prophetic words, and I know that the Lord will deliver a big victory. God has to really extend certain periods. And so again, I know uh, we've all expected certain things to happen at a certain time, uh, but really I've been just um, at peace knowing that God uh, at this point is it's all up to him right you know you'll see right you'll see soon and i've been saying that this entire time and though it looks like it's hopeless or it's different um you know god's promised and reassured me that it's not and that it's coming very soon uh the exposure the the punishment and just cleaning the house uh and you know the second term under trump all those things those things will come soon and so um uh, the these clips time. only cover the first week after the 20th but i assure you he hasn't backed off one iota in the intervening years and in spite of the fact that the Lord absolutely no question promised him that Trump would be president again during the current term, not after the 2024 election, and that the military would very soon, in a matter of days or weeks, sweep in and put Biden in handcuffs or whatever, he's still completely certain that his prophecy is right on the money. You enjoy this entirely too much. You know that I do. But while Yoon is at least QAnon adjacent, and while certainly given his millions of views on YouTube, he's making some money off of his complete refusal to grapple with reality, he's small potatoes in the world of QAnon slash Trump slash Stop the Steel Grifting. 
There are a number of ways that the discriminating cognitive dissonance connoisseur can approach the Trump-Christian prophecy nexus, but one of the most delightful is the series of MAGA-COPE compilations put together by the recently retired YouTuber Olake. If you haven't, I strongly recommend looking these up the next time you're on the world's biggest video site, but for your delectation here, I have chosen one of his later videos in which a number of prophetic voices scramble to explain why nothing whatsoever is going the way they and presumably the Lord, said it would. And so there's all these dimensions the Lord is coming to affect and change right now. And President Trump still has a very uh, active, viable role in that, and he will still step in on the playing field itself. He's even under the playing field. Believe me, God is doing things with him, uh, and I won't go into it more than that, but he's not a passive player. He is recognized from heaven. He is recognized as the primary government leader on planet Earth. People need to know that. From heaven, President Trump is recognized as the primary government leader on planet Earth. President Trump will serve above board as well. He will serve above board, and God is going to do this, and it's going to be fairly quick what he does. But this is something he did speak to me earlier. He didn't give me dates. He never gave me a date on anything, just that he would win. You guys need to be standing up in faith right now and standing up for the prophetic word, what God has spoken. You yeah. see, that's the part that they're not doing. Everybody wants to cave into this. Well, look, I am not going to apologize right now. Not going to happen. I'm not leaving this foxhole. I know what God has said. I know what God has shown. Chris, I got a book full of prophecies that God gave me before Trump ever came into office. It still has not come to pass yet, but he has to be in for a second term in order for them to come to pass. So I will not, I will not backtrack. I will not falter. And I will not bow a knee to man or these prophets of Baal that are putting a, uh, a, a false sense of concern, if you will, on people right now, because I know what God says. I don't mean that to sound arrogant. I'm just standing in faith. Why, if, if Donald Trump was, as I believe, God's man in the White House for four years. Why did God not preserve him? Because if God had given him favor, nothing that mankind could have done could have removed him from that office, could have prevented they him. They tried for four years. <laughs> they tried for four years. And yet the one thing that he did during that time that um, that would virtually guarantee uh, God's favor from being removed was to put his own personal stamp of approval on behavior that God condemns in the harshest possible terms in the Bible which is specifically male homosexuality. I'd like to highlight one prophet I really love who not only prophesies about Trump on behalf of God, but literally speaks as the Almighty in the first person when she does so. And if you believe that Trump didn't win the election, she's got bad news. For I say, this is my land and these are my people and I have raised them up for such a time as this. My people have prayed. They have fasted, they have called on my name, and I will not turn a deaf ear unto them, but to the lost, to the wicked, to those who chose to cheat and steal and lie, they shall have every curse come upon them that they have spoken over my president, Donald J. Trump. I say he is the president, he won, and in 2021, you will see that he won. And I say I will replace the one who boldly dares to step upon the platform of my country and say it is his, for he has an evil, wicked agenda. I will not approve that agenda. I will not approve him. And no one should approve him. For I say he is wrong. He is illegitimate. And I will not confirm him. I will not talk about him. He will not be known in this land. And one day his name will be like dust. And I say he will be crushed below the landslide, landslide of the fraud and the evil and the wickedness. It will be plainly be seen and known. And everyone will know what he is. And what his plan is, for I call him a villain. The villain is the worst person in the plot. No one who approves him, no one who congratulates him will be on my side. I say, repent if you have said those words. Do not side with evil, for that is what you will have. Do not side with wickedness, for that will consume your life. You do not want to be a part of what is going on there. And I say, I will end it when I say it is over. In spite of the magnificence of Olake's compilations, the best chronicler I've found regarding this weird mutation that hardcore evangelical Christianity has taken in the direction of Trump worship in recent years, is the site now known as Owen's Fireside Chat, previously Telltale Fireside Chat. The host, an ex-Jehovah's Witness, does the hard work so you don't have to. Not only posting crazy shit as it issues from these people's mouths, but tracking the development of Trumpist Christianity over time so you can see how it incorporates or ignores new events to maintain the delusion. This is one of those times where the creator's own commentary does a better job than I could, so I'm just going to play you some excerpts of this guy's work and let it speak for itself. Please do, you know, go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe. This is Nathan French. He considers Donald Trump to be the Messiah. No joke. He considers Trump to be 
basically the second coming of Jesus. It's a very complex theology, as many theologies are, but it is completely and totally 100% legitimately a real theology where these people really do believe that Trump is a messiah. What they tried to do to him and this whole, all the nonsense of the insurrection and, and all this nonsense trying to paint him into a corner and the indictment and all of it is playing right into the, the words that have been prophesied by many who have even been on your show. So I'm excited to see the results. I'm excited to see faith rewarded. When somebody prophesies something, there are two linchpins, two things, two hinges that could go wrong. Either God lied or you lied. Which one was it? Listen to what Hank Kuhneman had to say after he found out about uh, Donald Trump's next indictment, number 53 or something. I went to my fathers. I went to my spiritual mothers. I went to my board. I went to my peer level relationships and said, hey, there's a lot of calling out going on and my name's getting thrown out there. Right, so what he's saying is he's being called out right now because he prophesied Trump would be president in 2020. He was going to win the election. And he says, I went to my board, I went to my peers, I went to my everybody else, whoever. And I said, what do I do? I prophesied that Trump would win the election and he lost. What do I do? Okay, so these people are supposed to hold him accountable, right? So what'd they say? Uh, what do I do? Jesus told me not to say anything. They said, follow what Jesus said, you're right on. And they told me not to address it. And so don't keep asking me to take the lead. I have. I've honored Jesus. I've done what he said. And I honored those that I'm accountable to, submitted to. Two megachurch pastors so far that have prophesied that Trump is going to win the 2020 election. Do you know who else did? Johnny Enloe did. Listen to this. This is 2019. It's, I think, early December. 2019 leading up to the 2020 election i was asking the lord about it he hadn't told me i was like lord you still haven't showed me what the first thing he said is he is going to save you from things you don't know you need to be saved from yet talking about donald trump and then the lord progressively began to speak regarding that this time in the presidency is going to be a hinge of the ages and be known as before Trump and after Trump because of the way I'm going to use him. I'm using him as a Trump card, but I'm the Trump card player. And he said, the nations will be known as before Trump, after Trump. And the Lord, it was like, he said, I'm really not interested in your all's vote this time. I'm doing it. Oh boy. This guy just picked a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies, didn't he? All the way back in 2019. This is him prophesying unequivocally. You cannot get around this. You don't even have to vote. God is going to install Trump as the next president, period. Don't bother going to vote. Who cares? Trump's going to be the next president anyways. God told me. I usually give you all that option. This time, I'm not. This is a rescue operation from heaven. This is, this is. Just sad is what it is. This is just sad. A, a, a moment of the ages. This will go down. This time period will go down as a before and after. Okay, so check out uh, what Johnny Enloe had to say. This is early June, 2023. When the Lord speaks, and I put it in a book, yeah. that he would win the next election, um, it did happen. I thought the prophecy was that Donald Trump was going to be the president in 2021. Isn't that what the prophecy was? And the Lord, it was like, he said, I'm really not interested in your all's vote this time. I'm doing it. I usually give you all that option. This time, I'm not. This is a rescue operation from heaven. Oops. It did happen. It's No, it didn't. Just, yeah. And the proof has been ruled out probably in at least four formats publicly in some way or another. Whether it's stuff Mike Lindell's revealed, whether it's something that Greg, uh, I forget his name. What Phillips, he, I think. Greg Phillips yeah, or something. What he's revealed. Yeah, Mike Lindell didn't reveal anything, and it's been proven in a court of law like over and over and over again. It's out there, and it's and it's recycling in the news, uh, in the alternative news. Oh, alternative news, interesting. Over and over, the election was fraudulent. It was stolen. Uh, this is the same program, the Elijah List. It's just a different host, Kelsey O'Malley, instead of Steve Schultz. Listen to him try to explain that prophecy. 
from heaven's standpoint, Trump is the number one government official on planet Earth. He is the president, not just of the United States. He is God's president for Earth at this time. There are people that are not just more powerful than the president of the United States. Um, they're more pre they're more powerful than the United States is right now. And that's Donald Trump, I guess. This is Shane Vaughn. If you're unfamiliar, he's famously a leader of the Trump cult and what is now the Trump religion. This book just came out. Title is Donald J. Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ. And it outlines a new theology for a brand new religion a Trump-centered religion, which basically names him as a messiah, right? So I'm going through the book and reading about it and figuring out how the theology works and started to realize that Shane Vaughn bought into this theology a long time ago. This is Shane Vaughn. He's a televangelist. This is a, a fundamental piece of the Trump religion that he's about to lay on us. That is where George Washington prayed, right? There's a chapel right outside the Twin Towers where George Washington, that picture of him praying by the horse, that's where it happened. That's where he dedicated our nation in covenant to God. If you will make us a great nation, deliver us from tyranny, then we will serve you. None of that's true. It's all complete nonsense. But it outlines their theology. He's about to tell us how that relates to Trump in the next clip. What is the prophetic seal that Yahweh placed upon Donald Trump and upon his, his true people? It is supernatural prosperity and blessings. Donald Trump carries the prophetic seal of the calling of God. If you are anointed by Yahweh for a specific plan and purpose, you are a Messiah. Yahshua was the Messiah of mankind, but Donald Trump is the Messiah of America. Donald Trump is the Messiah. As the book cover said, he's the son of man. There is no MAGA without Donald Trump. For you to leave him now makes you a traitor of the MAGA movement. I don't care if you like it or not. And remember, the MAGA movement is a religious movement in his mind. When you do not support the man that God has ordained for the job, you are a Judas. You must know he's not just a man. He's God's man. He is your man. He's your children's man. He's your grandchildren's man. He's going to do his will on the earth. I'm going to do your mom on the earth. Do you even care anymore? There are some of you watching me right now that are even looking at other candidates, Ron DeSantis and others. Shame on you. Hear the voice of truth. God raised up a man and he's going to raise him up again. And if you get off the truck train, you're going to get on the trash train that goes to nowhere but the dump.